So <clears throat> today and tomorrow, we'll be working on the building tidy tools um, um, worship. Um, so this um, worship is um, um, about like building our packages and it's, it's called tidy tools because um, the, the people that made this worship have made a lot of tidy verse packages. Um, 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 and so <clears throat> actually all this workflow actually uses some of those same tidyverse packages for making them. So on the website here, there's a link to it, which is like github.com rcdio dash com dash 2020 yield dash tidy tools dash uh, yield dash tidy dash tools. So that's the website we'll use over here. Um, and so <clears throat> This one is actually maybe easier if you just clone it on to your computer. Um, so you download um, all these repository. This is going to contain the PDF files and then also some art markdown files uh, for some exercises and things like that. So um, like I'm on my uh, Windows computer. So what I did was I opened um, uh, Git Bash and then like cloned it. Um, um, so you could just clone clone it to your computer wherever you want. Um, I cloned it to my desktop just to make it easier to access uh, for today. Um, so please let me know with a little check marks if you have the files on your computer with the zoom check marks. Um, While you do that, while you clone it, you might also want to install some packages. So on the README here, there's a um, um, there's a set of um, um, of packages that are highlighted that you might want to install. So actually, I'm going to do that myself just to make sure I have them all. You know, while you install things, I'll just um, talk a little bit about it. So. Um, um, I'm going to open the intro one PDF file. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about it, like um, in terms of who made this. So um, this, uh, this workshop um, was made by Charlotte Wickham and Hadley Wickham. Um, I actually took the 2019 version of this workshop and um, um, I see that they've changed it quite a bit. They made it more didactic this time. So there's less slides and more code um, to go through. Um, um, and so, you know, like, we'll we'll go over this material. Um, and there's a lot to learn about our packages. And like, um, you might be actually interested in, in attending one of these workshops in the future. Um, uh, um, uh, so. A little bit about Charlotte. She's a part-time instructor at, at Oregon State University, um, and I, I believe she's also a consultant. And um, I forget if she works also at our studio. Um, let's let me, let me check her Twitter. Um, um, Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, so she has done a lot of teaching. Um, and she also does like private training, I guess. Um, um, so, uh, like uh, data science in the tidy, uh, you can't see that. Data science in the tidyverse and introduction to R in the tidyverse. Um, and yeah, she does some, cons she does consulting work too. Um, um, and she has a lot of experience teaching too. Um, so, like I mentioned, I took the 2019 version uh, of that workshop. Um, um, and so, it's designed to be for a, a two-day workshop, um, um, uh, like a nine-to-five type of thing. And, and like again, we're only going to spend like two hours each day. Uh, on it, so we won't get to uh, uh, cover the whole material. Um, 
Um, but I, I mean, I think this will be good enough to get us started and, um, and we'll have plenty of opportunities to practice uh, building um, our packages. Um, and so the first set of slides are about like an introduction, a bit of like, um, uh, this introduction goes through a process called the whole game where we'll actually make a full R package um, just for a small function. Um, but that is how we can get exposed um, to, the, to these functions um, initially. Um, then there's a set of slides about testing, how to test your package, and then documenting and sharing. Uh, after that, there's some exercises to learn about dependencies. And then for day two, about like, um, um, uh, like if you want to expand the tidyverse by using tidyverse packages in your own package, um, designing the package interface. So this is about a little bit about like choosing how to name your functions, uh, how your functions should do and stuff. And then finally, there's an um, object-oriented programming set of um, exercises. And so we definitely won't get to the object-oriented object-oriented programming stuff. Um, um, and some of the things here, like some of these exercises we might not do. Um, we'll see how much time we have. Um, and so a lot of this is based on this book called Our, Our Packages, which uh, um, I used to have a copy. Um, um, uh, um, I don't, yeah, I don't have that paper copy anymore. Um, but um, um, there's this website here um, that where a lot of this material comes from. And we've already been um, exposed to the, to the book about what they forgot to teach about R and the happy git with R. Um, so, uh, all right, so let me skip some of this stuff. Um, so let's, let's do this. Um, wait, um, I see that several of you haven't downloaded the slides yet uh, on the Zoom check marks. Uh, let's uh, pause a bit here until everyone has the files. Sorry, so I, I have the, um, I downloaded everything, but I just haven't used the Zoom check mark before. Um, so it's um, um, on the participants menu for Zoom. That's yeah. where you'll be able to see the check mark. Oh. Okay, thanks. Um, so uh, I'm gonna open this website here, the whole game. Um, um, my computer lets me. Oh. Um, seems to have crashed. I right. already had it open anyway, but um, um, so this chapter over here is the second chapter on the book called Our Packages, and so um, and so. Uh, it might be easier for you to, to follow um, some of the instructions here instead of the, the ones from the slide. Um, uh, my Adobe crashed, I think. Um, right. Let's try this again. Um, all right, so let's do the whole game stuff. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing that we'll, what we'll do is we're, we're gonna use the uses create package function to actually get started, right? So this function um, does a lot of things for us. Um, and so um, um, let me move this to one side and the book to the other. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a test a package called foo factors. Um, and so this is like on the right side, I have the output of what that does. Um, and so this create package here is going to first create a specific directory that you, that you give it to. It's going to create the R directory, the description file. It's going to populate that description file with some text that you might have. 
um, um, it's going to create a namespace file, an R Studio project file, um, and our user project file. Ignore it, um, um, and then ignore some other files that you don't want to be part of your R package, which are specified in a in a file called the .dot R build ignore. Once all of that is done, then it's going to open um, that uh, path in a new R Studio session. Um, so this create underscore package function does a lot for us, um, and it's the, the you know basically after you run that you almost have an R package to get started. Um, um, and then um, once we have that, we're going to use the use git function to to start version controlling our code. Uh, this is something that we've already set up in the past and we've used before. So let's start doing this. Um, so let's just create our package. Um, 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 called full factors. That will be our 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 test scenario here. And so you can create it in any path you want. I'm going to create it on my desktop. So for that, I want to open our studio over right here. Um, mm -hmm. And type create. Uh, sorry, use this colon colon create package. Um, on my desktop, I'm going to call it Foo Factors. Um, so on my terminal, I got all that output that um, similar to the one that we had on the slide. Um, 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 and so created the Foo Factors directory. Um, um, created the, our project for it, added some files to the git ignore and some other files to our build ignore. Um, and so, and then it opened a new R Studio window for me, right? Um, so once I'm here on this, um, on my new R package called Foo Factors, we want to version control it. So we'll, um, I'll use, use this, use git. Yes, Maddie. I've got an error here. Can I run the use this create package? Right. So uh, on my R Studio window where we have the full factors project open. Um, actually to avoid any confusion, I'm gonna close my previous one. Um, um, and so in that one, I'm going to use the use this use git command, and so that's going to set up uh, GitHub for us. Um, and so we've already done like a lot of the GitHub configuration in, in previous videos and stuff like that. Um, and so it's here is going to ask if it's okay to commit some files, and um, use this always shows you three different options when it's asking you for input. The text changes every time, and the positions change too, so you actually need to read it. Uh, one option is going to be yes, two of them are going to be no. So in this case, I want to say yes. So that's absolutely. And then after we made a commit, it's like, oh, do you need to you want to restart our studio? So on the top right in my window here, it will show the Git pane. And so I want to do that. So I'll type one for uh, for yes. So that's restarting my R Studio window in the same R project. And now I can see here that I have the Git tab open. So now I have a, um, um, a local package that is that we're version controlling. Um, um, right. So let's continue. And so um, uh, the goal of this little package full factors is to deal with factors. Um, and so that's because factors can be a little bit of like complicated. Um, and so let's say we have two factors. One of them, um, uh, says uh, character in the streets. The other one says integrate in the, in the sheets. Uh, and both of these are like factor variables. Um, the first one we're going to assign it to the A object. And so that one is going to have four different levels character in streets and dev. B is going to have um, uh, 
also four different levels in integer sheets and that. So, you know, this example here, we can already notice that some of the factor levels are overlapping streets and the across the two different objects, but like the other ones are not um, over, uh, sorry, and in. Um, uh, but they're like, um, uh, they're actually not the same exact level. So on A, that's the second level, on B, that's the first level. And so, um, what happens is that actually, if, you, if I run this code right on my uh, on my window, on my R window, um, if I have now A and B, and if I combine them a, uh, using the C function, um, what actually happens is that they get converted to numeric values. So this is like the same thing as as numeric A as numeric B. Um, uh, uh, and so we lose we lose the labels. So uh, that's like the motivating problem that we're trying to work with right now. Um, and so we'll, we'll make a little uh, uh, um, function called fbind for combining factors. Um, uh, because really what we want to do is to do something like this, where we convert them to characters combine them into each other, and then make them into a single factor. That way, now we have um, six different levels, character in, integer, sheets, but then also streets and the, right? Um, so we're gonna write our little function called fbind. Um, so now that we know the, you know, at this moment, we're already given a specific function name, right? Sometimes thinking about the function name can be a bit complicated, and actually, in, in a session I had today earlier uh, with David Zhang, we were talking about function names. <laughs> uh, um, um, but like here, let's we're gonna call it f by. So how do you actually make the function? Um, so let's use the use this function called use underscore r. So I'll use use this colon colon use underscore r, and I'm gonna call it f by. That's the name of my function. So you be, uh, let's do that. Um, and so, what actually, what did that do? Um, under the it, under the R directory, it created a file called. I don't, can you see this, or should I make it bigger? Well, yes, Maddie. Uh when I use this, use this, use git command, it throws an error again. I don't see that git or tab. Um, okay. So I'll pause the recording. Okay, uh, okay we're back. Um, so, um, um, so I just use, use this use r with fy. What that did is that it created the file uh, fbind.r, that R script, inside the R folder of my package foo factors. And then it also automatically opened it in my, um, uh, in my um, R studio. Um, I want to meet you, Maddie, sorry. Because um, uh, there's some background noise coming from Maddie. Um, okay, um, so uh, so at this point we have our little R file, um, um, but it has nothing on it, right? It's just it's called fbind.r. And so the next thing we'd want to do is um, uh, uh, actually start uh, of, uh, our function. Um, and so, um, Let's let's start our function here at y. Um, I want to say like function here, and uh, I'm gonna paste the the factor um, um, a and b. Right. So this is just a little function here. Um, we we'll, we can always edit it a bit more later. Um, um, so at this point, I, we have the function. 
um, in our R script. Um, but the next question is like, how do you actually use this function when you're developing the package, right? How can you test that your function is working? Um, um, so <clears throat> what can you do, right? So um, you, most, you might be um, used to the source uh, function that um, it's a function that we use sometimes for running our code that we have in a different file. Um, uh, but there are some problems with doing that when you're doing package development. Um, these are related to like uh, namespace and things like that. And so there's actually a much clever solution, which is dev tools load all. Um, so this is a function that we'll be using a ton. Um, and so what this does is that it's almost like it, um, in a way, it's like, it's, it's the equivalent of like the library function for a package that we have installed, but this is for a package under development uh, on the particular directory that we're working at. Um, and so we'll use this function a lot. Um, and so uh, we're gonna use it so much that, eh, I'm trying to copy this. Um, we're gonna use it so much that um, you might actually want to remember the, the, the keyboard shortcut for it. And so here I'm like copy pasting it. Um, and so you can see that it's saying like, I'm loading the package full factors. And at this point I can do like F bind A and B. And it actually works, right? So I actually have a function F bind available to me. Now, uh, let's say I made a change, right? So let's say like, I say like print uh, Leo, right? Um, like I could like, you know, type dev tools load all again, um, or um, I could use a, sh a keyboard shortcut for it. The keyboard shortcut for dev tools load all is Control Shift L. So I'll put it here as a as a comment. Um, right. So Control Shift L. If you just press that, then it automatically uh, runs Dev Tools Load All. And so now I can be like F Vine A and B, and I see that I get a little, you know, I see my update that it prints uh, Leo there. Right. Um, so this is how um, you can speed up your process of testing the package as you're developing it. You can make a little change, load all the package, um, and then, and then, um, and then um, use your new modified function. Uh, and this is a lot better than using source, for example, um, or any of those um, other functions. Um, so, <clears throat> So this will be our workflow for making packages, right? So we're gonna modify some code and then we'll reload our package using, uh, sorry, uh, for Mac users, instead of control is command. Uh, um, so command shift L or control shift L, that's how we're gonna load, reload all the code again. Um, um, and then we can explore it, uh, explore it in our console and see how it works. If we don't like how it, it works. So for example, maybe I don't like the print. Maybe I, you know, I want to use, let's say, message and like add a little like timestamp to my message, right? I can just do that. Control Shift L. Um, is, I actually didn't save the file, so it's going to prompt me like, do you want to save the file before reloading it? And I'll say yes. Um, and now I can run on the console F Y F A and B again, right? Um, and so I actually made an error here because I type message with three S's instead of two. So I'll fix that error, Control Shield Shift L, save it, um, and then on the console run F Y A comma B again. And so I get the updated message. So this workflow is how you can uh, uh, greatly improve the speed at which you. Uh, write our code in a package, test it, um, 
um, and see the changes. Um, all, you know, in the past, people, what they had to do was they had to install a local pack version of their package in the computer, restart R completely, and then test their package locally. Um, so DevTools load all as like, a, um, is a great function for avoiding that whole cumbersome process. Um, um, so like this is, I guess what I was saying, it's like, it's kind of equivalent. And so like installing the package and loading it again with library, but it does it, does it in a way that is way, way faster than all of that. Um, and then some, I mean, there's some like differences and things like that. Um, so once we have our package, right? The next thing we might want to do is to, is to check our package. So there is a function on DevTools called um, check for that. And so let's try that. DevTools check. And so this is going to run a bunch of tests for me. Um, and it's going to see if our package is like correctly specified. Um, uh, it's like checking if you know the package can be installed, if it has documentation, if there's any errors in the documentation and stuff. And at the end here is like, oh, actually there's a warning and a note, right? So there's some problems. And the summary of that is that um, the warnings are that uh, uh, I'm not using a standard license for my package. Um, and then the note is, I guess you couldn't verify the current time. Um, um, that one I'm not sure about. But this one is like we can de definitely solve. Um, um, and that's something that is part of the description file. Um, so if I go back to the files under the description, we'll um, under license, dev, um, use this provides a little helpful message for saying like, oh, you know, you might want to use one of these functions from uses for specifying a license. Um, I'm just going to change this for artistic uh, 2.0 um, and then run the check again. And so uh, that warning should go away. Um, as your package gets bigger, uh, running our command check will take more time. Um, and so you might actually not want to run this. Um, and so I made a mistake, I guess uh, artistic 2.0 is not the correct spelling. Let me look at one of my previous packages, which is something I always do. So let me look at the package I was working on earlier today. Um, um, let me look at that description. Oh, it's capital A artistic. Uh, let's just copy that, sorry. I almost had it. Okay, let's check, let's run the check again, the check. Um, um, so it's running a bunch of tests for us already. Um, um, and now we have a package without warnings or errors. We only have one note. And so there's actually like um, a gradient of how um, important these messages are. You can have a package in Bioconductor that has notes, but you're not allowed to have any errors or warnings um, on our command check. Um, so what is this DevTools check doing? It's actually like kind of similar to running the full R command check. However, it does it in a slightly different way. Um, and so this will like check for like technical validity. Um, and you know, you, there's also a keyboard shortcut for it, which is like command or control, depending on where your Mac or Windows, shift and then E. Um, and the idea is that you want to start doing this process early on um, because, um, um, if you do it early on, it's easier to parse out the full like set of errors that you get from our command check, fix them, um, because you only have a couple things to look at, right? 
then you also want to do it incrementally. Um, uh, so that will, that means you want to do it often uh, as you make changes because let's say our command check was working today, right? And I make a little change uh, and it stops working tomorrow. Um, I can, I can, I know that the small change I made caused the error. And so like, let's say I changed 10 lines of code. I can look at those 10 lines of code and find the source of the error a lot faster than if I do it later. Um, and so <clears throat> this is gonna be, uh, um, this is actually a requirement for having an R package on Biconductor and also on CRAN. Um, um, and so you wanna do this often. Um, this is beyond the scope of the building tidy tools, but like, um, um, that's something that I've, uh, because it can take a while of, um, some time to run. That's something that I've automated using GitHub actions. And so every time I make a commit and push it to GitHub, for example, this is a project that I'm working with David Zhang. And so earlier today, let's say here, I made a change or I mean, David made this change and he broke the package. He noticed that it broke on our command check made some, another change and then it worked again, right? And so these green and, um, and um, green check marks and uh, red check boxes um, show the output of that. Uh, so this particular one, like let's say on this X, I can look at it and it like actually failed on Windows. And so I can look at the output of um, our command check, which is um, the function used by DevTools check, right? So it, saying at some point, uh, like I'm gonna scroll to the end, uh, it's gonna give us that summary um, of there was an error actually here, right? Um, check is also gonna run all our uh, unit tests and we'll learn more about them uh, uh, later. Um, all right, so, you know, right now we have a working package that has zero errors, zero warnings. There's a little note and we can try to find that later on. Uh, and I think, uh, I don't know if, let me see if that gets, fi gets fixed by the date. Uh, let's see. I added a date to the uh, description file. While my check runs, we're gonna learn now about a new function called DevTools document. So DevTools document is how we're gonna be able to make the documentation for our package, right? And so I'll just run that right now. I'm copying and pasting it. Um, and so this function, what it does is that um, you go through our package finds anything that needs to be updated, like documentation-wise, and updates it. Right now, we don't have any documentation for our, fu uh, for our function uh, fbind, uh, so we, we need to make some documentation for it. Now, <clears throat> documentation in R like, has a lot of specific rules, and so um, there's actually a, help, a helper package called Roxygen2, uh, which is the one used underneath the hood by DevTools document. And so uh, RStudio you know, recognizes that that is a very helpful package. And so if I go to fbind.r, and if I click inside the function anywhere, then I can use a little magic wand and insert the Roxygen skeleton, which has a, a very long keyboard shortcut that is Control I, Alt, Shift, R. The R is for like Roxygen. Um, I never remember that as, uh, um, I never remember this keyboard shortcut, so I always use a little magic wand. And so if I press that, because I'm inside a function, it detects that, it detects automatically what are the arguments to my function, A and B, and then it pre-populates um, my R script here with a set of lines that start with the pound and then apostrophe, single apostrophe uh, uh, sign. And so all these lines that start with uh, the pound sign and then the little uh, apostrophe, those are recognized by Roxygen for documenting the package. So 
let me save that file and then run dev tools document. And so uh, without any, you know, making any changes, dev tools document right now, um, uh, it tried running it, but like it, it's giving me a couple of warnings. But anyway, it created a little file for, for us uh, um, and, a, and a directory called, uh, a, called M A N. Uh, which is short for manual. Um, so inside of it, it created a file called fbind.r and then d for document. Um, and so that's because we were we we were doing the documentation for a function fbind. So we look at fbind.rd. Um, um, our studio here recognizes this recognizes that this is a document that we created automatically using Roxy Shin 2. And so it gives us a, a little warning here saying like this document is read only. You should never in theory uh, manually edit any of this file. Uh, uh, but here we can see that it's, um, um, it created the fbind entry. Um, it has a little title that right, I mean right now we didn't specify anything for it. It shows how the function can be used it shows like what are the arguments for the function, um, and that's that's about it, right? So mm, if I load all, so control control shift L or command shift L, now I can do a dollar a question mark F bind, um, and that I actually opened a help file for F bind, uh, and so. Here you can see like you know the the, the structure for it, um, but it's you know not that useful right now. So we can make it a little bit more interesting. So for example, here I could be like here a factor. Um, and then say another factor. Um, as a title, I want to say like combine factors, uh, or I mean, I guess because the function is bind, I'll say like uh, bind factors. Um, let me make it more explicit. Bind two factors. I'm gonna add a little like um, um, space, and so the title. You know, I have an empty line after it the next little paragraph that will become the description for it. So like here, I'm going to say like to do. Um, so I'll save that and I'll run document again. Um, and then load all again. And then I'll look at the help file for fbind just so we can see the differences. So we can we notice here now the title is different now it says by two factors. We have a description paragraph paragraph now and it just says to do. That's like that little sentence there that I've added. And it has um, the arguments. And so here it has like in code syntax factor and then another factor, right? There are no examples for it. Um, and so uh, let's add an example. So under examples, under the example section, we're just going to press enter. Our studio automatically adds the pound um, single apostrophe space um, start of the line. And so here I'm going to just start my example. So let's, like, we're going to say create two factors. So I'm going to create X uh, factor. That'll be like, let's say, um, uh, um, Leo and Alex, and then I'm going to create a second factor called, let's say, like uh, right. um, so they they have some common, uh, they have a common one called Alex, uh, a common level. And so then now after that, I'm going to say like here, like run fbind. As my example, I'll use fbind x comma y. Um, 
while I'm making the examples, maybe I want to test the code, right? And so one quick way that you can do this is from our theory itself, it recognizes that this is actually our code. Um, um, and so you can execute that line by pressing Control Enter or Command Enter in your Mac. So I'll press that. Like I can even press it for line 12, which is the, the comment one, and it prints the comment there. So this is like easier than me, like manually selecting the code, copying it, and then pasting it. All right. So Control Enter or Command Enter will execute lines of code. And because I, I, I loaded all the package with DevTools load all, I can actually test that my function, my example works. And then, um, 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 and it didn't right now. And so let me actually load all the package again, just to make sure I have the latest version. Um, so it's printing the message um, and it's making, oh, you know what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know what is the mistake I made? I didn't actually use the scene function inside factor. Right? Uh, so my X and Y are not complete, complete, right? X here is just NA. So I need to add like C uh, to both of my example definitions. Um, and so pressing control enter, I can run my function again, right? So once I'm happy with the, uh, the result of my example, I can then run um, DevTools document again, uh, load it all, and then check the help page for FBind. Um, so let's open that a bit bigger. And so now we have the exact the examples there, right? Um, so this is how uh, you can start like testing your functions, uh, writing information about how to use them, but then as you're developing them, also test that your function is working correctly. Um, right. So <clears throat> once you've made some functions, you might also want to you know check your, your package again. So let's run the tools check. Um, um, you know, again, because we, we want to make sure that our package is working properly and we were supposed to be doing this often, right? Um, so this takes a couple of seconds to run. Um, and it's actually having to run a bit more tests now because we have a, a, a larger package, right? And so we actually got a new note that says that fbind, the, um, the R D file for it, so the R documentation file for it, on lines 14 to 16 uh, has a problem. So let me open that file, lines 14 to 16. Over here, it's saying like, oh, we have an empty value section, right? Why is that a problem, right? So, I mean, it's, um, the documentation here has um, has a placeholder that we're not using. So let's you know uh, make sure that we use that information. And so the value part, the value section of an RD file is specified by the return return tag on Roxygen. So here I'm going to say like this returns uh, a combined uh, factor. Um, that um, yeah. maybe the text that I'm writing is not the best, right? But like that will, um, um, that's something, you know, we can always edit later. So I'm actually gonna press Control Shift D. Um, and Control Shift D is a keyboard shortcut for running DevTools document, but it actually runs it on a different R session than the one I'm running on. Um, 
And so once I did that, I'm going to press, um, I think it's Control Shift E. Yeah, Control Shift E. That runs DevTools check on a different R session again. So this is better than me typing DevTools document of that or DevTools check um, manually. So it's, um, uh, so it was for document that was Control or Command plus Shift plus V. And then for check, that was control or command plus shift plus E. Right. And so now, I mean, we still, we still have that unable to verify current time uh, note, but now uh, we got rid of that other, other note about an empty value section. Like, like um, um, if I load it all and then look at, at Vine again, like our command check doesn't realize that you know my description is not you know very useful it just as to do right, but it I, you know recognizes that it has something there right. So it won't be a perfect thing. It won't like tell you like oh you have typos right <laughs> or or anything like that. But um, uh, it will check all the technical components of the documentation. And so now we see under the value section of the help page that we have information for the user on. Eh, now, what is the output of our of this function called f prime? Um, so let's say now we're you know we're happy with our package and we actually want to install it. Um, so you could go to uh, to uh, build, install and restart, or uh, that will be control or command plus shift plus b. Uh, and so I'm going to run that. And so a lot of things are happening really fast, too fast for me to explain them. <laughs> um, and so what happened here? Uh, it actually ran R on my computer. So I'm, I'm on Windows, so this is actually R command dot exit. Uh, if I was a Mac or, or Linux, it would be just R install. And then it's installing uh, the full factors package into my uh, package library. So in, in this case, I'm working on their, uh, my R 4.0.2 uh, located on my D, on my, uh, on my D disk. Um, so it's installing the package full factors there. Uh, and then it's like creating all the help links, all of that, building the package, um, testing if it can be installed, testing if it, uh, if it can be loaded, um, uh, and then it's creating the help files for full factors, um, and then it's like, okay, we're done. Uh, after it did all of that, uh, it restarted my R session on R Studio, um, and then it loaded the package full factors. So, why do you want to do this? For example, like now, if I look at the help help page for fbind. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, oh. Mm. oh, I thought it would do it. Uh, oh, it didn't, sorry. Um, I don't actually have an example here of uh, uh, of a link to another function. So let me make this a bit more complicated. So factor is a function from the base package. So uh, let's try to link to it. Um, some document in it. Um, oh, command shift, oh. control shift B. So we start on reload. Hmm. Uh, I didn't want to look at factor, I want to look at F1, sorry. Um, 
And so in this particular case, because I installed the package and stuff, my link now works. So I can navigate, um, um, the user can now see that uh, I'm linking um, my work factor to the pack to the help page uh, factor from the base package, right? So this is the package containing base, and that's the help file name factor. Um, and so, um, if let me just restart my session, my R session. If I load everything with DevTools load all, and then do F bind. Uh, the link is not there. Uh, and that's because links actually need to have the installed package to completely work. Um, um, so that could be a, a, a use case where you actually want to test, you know, like um, the link, the links for your package and stuff like that. Um, so some of these syntax is a little bit confusing. Um, I like, it looks like our markdown, but it's a little bit complicated. It's a bit more complicated. Like for example, in our markdown, this might be a link, right? So this is like the text and that's the URL of your link. Here actually is like, uh, is with two square brackets. So, um, um, let me run this again, command shift D. Um, then, Command Shift B to install it. Restart the session. We loaded it. Question mark F find. Um, and so now the text of my link is factor parenthesis. In, uh, before it was base column column factor, but the link is still works. It still sends the person to the base package to the factor uh, help page. Um, right. So this is how like linking. Uh, you know, linking is something that will make the life of your users a lot easier, right? Because they don't have to be like, oh, what is a specific you know package or function that. Um, I should be looking at. They can just click and navigate the, the world of um, our documentation. Um, so we've installed it. And so the install function from DevTools is kind of equivalent to the R command install. It has some differences there. And, um, um, and so this is when you want to make the transition from just developing the package to actually using it, right? Um, or if you actually, or if you want to test the, the, that the links actually work um, and go to the specific location that you, you wanted them to go to. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> um, because we're going to be using DevTools and, and test that and use this quite a bit, you might actually want to run use this edit underscore r underscore profile. Um, uh, that will open your R profile, and on it, you might actually want to add um, commands like this. Like, uh, if interactive, if we're in an interactive session, require the DevTools package, um, require test that. Uh, and you might even also want to add the use this package. Um, so you, those are three options that you want, you might want to add, and this will be for uh, developing our packages. Uh, that way in the future, you don't need to actually like load any of those packages. And that's because we're gonna, as you've noticed, we're restarting our R session very frequently when we're developing our packages. Um, and so, uh, like, if you don't want to like load DevTools as that and use this every single time, um, these three packages are probably the ones you want to have uh, preloaded. 
And so once you do that, for example, if I restart my R session, um, um, now I can directly type like use R, right? And it like auto completes shows me the help file, uh, help information for it, all of that. Um, so I didn't actually have to type like call, like use this colon colon, um, et cetera, because it's already loaded, right? So if I type like, for example, here, session info, we'll notice that it, I already have test that, dev tools, and use this loaded in my computer, in my session, in my R session. Um, all right. Uh, um, right. So <clears throat> um, there's one big thing here. You should you shouldn't actually uh, include any packages that you're going to be using in your analysis, like ggplot2 or dplyr, etc., because you want to document those in your R scripts, right? To make your R scripts reproducible and shareable with the world. Uh, they don't, you know, you don't want them to depend on your R profile. Um, now, <clears throat> this is something that I've done and sometimes I, I, I take it out. Uh, but you might also want to um, add the partial warnings. And so there's actually a little function here, you use partial warnings that will do that automatically for you. And so, uh, uh, um, and so if you do that, it says, it gives you the instructions of like, you know, copy those lines of code and edit them into your R profile. Um, so I'll just use, use like, use this. I mean, I already have used this loaded, so I don't actually need to type it, but I'll just type it in case you, you haven't um, added it yet. Um, R profile. Um, and so, uh, use these partial warnings, added those lines of code into my uh, clipboard, and that way it was easy for me to just paste them. So I'll just document this, use partial warnings. Why is this useful? Um, so let me uh, restart my R session. Um, um, uh, Uh, let's make this B factor, for example. Um, so if I edit that, I load it, I can then use, um, let me make X and Y. If I then say like F bind, a is equal to X, B is equal to Y, I'll get a little warning message. And it's telling me like, oh, you're using the partial matching uh, properties of R to match uh, here, I've, I said B is equal to Y, um, instead of saying B factor is equal to Y. Now, you, you might think like, oh, that's kind of like, you know, a silly thing. Um, uh, but as you get, you know, um, as you develop packages and you have more arguments and things like that, um, um, making sure that you're not using partial arguments in your own code will be useful to, um, uh, to make sure that, uh, that you don't make any mistakes later on because you might have another argument called like, uh, B here. Um, and so, uh, maybe you actually want to say like, oh, the, you know, I wanted to assign my factor to B, to B factor instead of B, right? Um, and so if you have two, fa two arguments that have similar names, the partial matching from R might work, but it, uh, but it won't, um, uh, um, you know, it won't work in the way that you're expecting it to. So just as an example here, I added the B argument. And so let's run F by X, Y here. Um, and so you'll notice now here that my Y was partially matched to B, which is the smallest of the two arguments that starts with B. Um, 
Uh, but then later on, my function is crashing because it, it's like, oh, I don't have a B factor, right? And so, um, uh, like, um, this could be a problem later on, right? And so this will be a more common scenario once we have more and more um, arguments. And like, inevitably, some of them are going to have like a, like a common structure of names. So I'll remove I'll remove all this stuff that I just did. Um, Right. I'm just going to return to the B state um, just to make this function a bit super cool. Uh, <clears throat> now, if you're making a lot of packages, um, use this has information that uh, that uh, will use automatically whenever you're making a package, and so. Uh, this description file has information about who you are, right? And because he doesn't know anything about me on this computer, it just says like, okay, this is where you have to put your first name, your last name, uh, your email, then your org ID, for example. And so if you already know all of this, you can actually make it um, 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 more automatic. And so you can add that to your profile. So I'll just, uh, let's see if we can copy this stuff. So like here you can change it right now. You could edit this thing such that in the future uh, it will be used by, um, by users whenever you're creating new packages and stuff. Right? Um, I always forget my org ID, so I'm going to look at it uh, from a previous package that I've made. Um, all right. All right, let's see if this works. So the next time I make an R package uh, with this computer, the description file will be uh, automatically filled in such that I won't have to edit it with my information. If it's all about being super productive and making a ton of packages, right? then you want to simplify this process. Because these, these are things that you have to do for every single package, right? You don't want to have to do them that way. Um, cool. Now, there's some settings here because we're restarting R all over the time. And we're making our packages that are uh, highly recommended for your R studio. Um, and so if you go to Tools, Global Options, um, uh, there's two. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller because otherwise I can't see it all. Um, okay, so we are here on Tools Global Options. There are some things that are uh, quite useful to um, to turn off that are normally turned on by default on um, on our on your window um, on your R Studio configuration. And so one of them is under the workspace. You want by default, this checkbox is selected. You want to unselect the one about restoring the R data into workspace. And then by default, the save workspace on R data on exit is set to, I think, um, ask, I think. And so you want to change it to never. So by doing this, we're going to make sure that we're, we never have any problems related to having data around in our R sessions in our computers. Um, um, so you should change those settings. And that's because we're going to be restarting R uh, very often, which uh, there's also a keyboard shortcut for that, which is Control Shift F10. Um, 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 uh, 
um, which, um, you know, on some keyboards, it might, it's easier to type than others. <laughs> so it's easier to, for me to type that on my um, uh, Windows computer than it is on my Mac computer. Because my map keyboard, uh, I need to press an extra key to press to select the function pen. Um, okay, so now that we have all of the about this, right? So we're going to set up our computer to to load the tools, to set partial matching, to tell information about it ourselves, and um, to avoid um, saving and reloading. Um, so. Um, let me pause the recording here and let you guys do. Okay. So at this point, uh, everyone has set up their computer, I think, um, to load like DevTools, use this, um, test that, etc. Uh, we're going to use parcel matching. Uh, we can tell use this about ourselves such that if we make a new package, um, you will use that information and we have some RC settings. So uh, let's now make a package. So um, I'm, I'm going to deviate a little bit from what they have here. Um, uh, um, um, uh, so the task that I want you to do is um, to make a new package. Um, Instead of full factors, you can call it, I don't know, full factors two, for example, right? Um, and in that package, I want you to, again, make the rbind function. But instead of the one that we've been using over here, I want you to use something a bit more complicated. So I'll post it on, um, I'll post it on the chat here on Zoom. Um, if it opens for me, uh, all right. Um, and I'll post it also on Slack in case you want to use it there. Um, um Um, so, you know, this is a case where I, I'm giving you a specific function, but then we need to like make the package for it, document it, um, like document the input, have an example, etc. Um, um, and you know, this is a you know a way to practice what we uh, what we'll be doing in the future, which is also like we have a lot of code already, right? Sometimes what we need to do is to put it into a package format or into a function um, in a package. So uh, let me stop recording.